Hello and welcome to Cambridge for Kids History Podcasts with me, Matthew Brooks. I'm an archaeologist and I love history. And in these podcasts, I would like to share my knowledge and discoveries with you. This is episode two of the Ancient Greek series. In this episode, we are in festive mood as we honour Zeus, the king of the gods, and patron of the Olympic Games. Nothing would please the father of the gods more than the mental discipline and physical fitness it required of the athletes on display. Ready, set, let's go. Just how far back in history athletic competitions were held is a matter of dispute, but it's quite certain that they happened in Greece almost 3,000 years ago. By the end of the 6th century BC, four important Greek sporting festivals, which were called the Classical Games, had reached high importance. The sporting events at Olympia were the oldest and most important of the four Greek athletic festivals and traditionally competitors would perform some of the events naked. The games were officially held every four years from 776 BC, but they possibly originated much earlier. A Greek myth credited the hero Heracles, better known as Hercules, with creating the running competitions at Olympia to celebrate the end of one of his missions called the Twelve Labours. Olympia was the most important temple of the thunder god Zeus, and the games were held in his honour. Animals were sacrificed and gifts were offered, and athletes had to swear vows to follow the rules before the great statue of Zeus. The games were declared by messengers travelling to all the main Greek cities around the Mediterranean, and any fighting or warring was forbidden during the time around the games to protect the travelling mass of people to and from Olympia. The games at Olympia continued with hardly any disruptions into the early Christian times and was the motivation for the modern Olympic Games we have today. The first modern games were held in Athens in 1896 and has continued every four years until the present day. It wasn't only athletics that took place during the games at Olympia, Chariot races were also a very popular event. In ancient Greece, only the rich could have enough money to own chariots and horses. Chariots were already used in the military to carry soldiers into battle, and chariot races were usually only held at funeral games to honour dead heroes as a tribute. Wealthy citizens and Greek politicians were desperate for success at these important events. They occasionally drove their own chariots but usually hired a professional charioteer, and the races held in a stadium called the Hippodrome. There were many crashes. The most treacherous part was at the turning hole, where chariot wheels could lock together and send the charioteers flying, and sometimes would result in death. After the hazards and excitement of the chariot races came the horse racing. This was also extremely dangerous, because the track was already cut up from the chariots, and saddles for the horse riders was not yet invented, so they had limited control. The winning horse and its owner were given huge honours as well as riches and gifts. Great prizes could be gained in athletic contests all over the Greek world, but success at Olympia carried the highest respect. Winning participants would have statues built in their honour, inside the temple of Zeus to celebrate their victory. And archaeologists find many of these statues today. Athletes would wrap a band made of wool around their head, arms and legs as a sign of victory. Winners at Olympia received a crown of olives, just as Hercules was said to have done after winning at the very first games. In the myth it is said that he received a wreath from Nike, the goddess of victory. One of the biggest attractions at the Greek games were the hand-to-hand events such as wrestling and boxing. Experts in their sports could earn great sums of money throughout the Greek-speaking world once they had won recognition at Olympia. Wrestling was a sport of great skillfulness and ability, which used many of the styles still seen today. 
It was one part of the pentathlon, which is a competition involving five events. The pentathlon was made up of discus, jumping, javelin, running and wrestling, which it all took place in one day. Unlike today, Greek discus throwers did not spin in a circle, and they hardly ever managed to throw over more than 30 metres, which is less than half the distance recorded today. In the ancient long jump, competitors used weights which were swung forward on takeoff and then backward before landing. This would increase their overall jump. Boxing was known as the most violent and bloodthirsty of sports. There were no rounds like we see today. Instead, the competitors brawled until one of them gave up. In ancient Greece, a small amount of animal skin was wrapped around the boxers' fists to shield their hands. Boxing gloves were eventually invented and also used by the Romans, who would sometimes place heavy metals like lead or iron into the gloves to cause greater damage. The Pancration was an event that mixed boxing and wrestling, and there were no rules, only biting and gouging of the eyes was illegal. It was brutal. The most ancient and respected event at Olympia was the running race around the stadium, which was a distance close to 200 metres, very similar to our 200 metre sprint today. Besides this similarity, there was a race along two lengths of the track, and a long distance race, but there was no marathon, which is more of a modern event. Although there were no competitions for women in the ancient Olympics, several women did gain victories as owners of horses in chariot races. At Olympia, a festival held in honour of the goddess Hera did include a race for women. Sports then was considered only a practice for men, it seems. In Sparta, girls and young women did compete locally in their local games, but apart from Sparta, contests for Greek women were very rare. Greece eventually lost its freedom to Rome in the 2nd century BC, and support for all the events at Olympia and in other places started to stop. The Romans looked on athletics with disapproval, as being naked to perform athletics in public was humiliating in their eyes, but it would be revived centuries later. Hopefully today you have enjoyed this episode and learnt something new. If you like this podcast, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. Tune in next time with your host, me, Matthew Brooks, for more time travelling. Thanks a lot for listening and have a great day. Welcome to Elderberry Tales. Grab your favourite pillow and a curious heart. It's time for a story. Elderberry Tales is a storytelling podcast featuring inspiring and engaging stories for kids. Ancient wisdom, timeless tales, and contemporary heroes. Connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, and listen on your favorite podcast player.